Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use video transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve 15 and briefly explaining the different categories that exist there. So in order to find your video transitions, you would go over to the effects library inside of the edit tab. And from there, there's video transitions at the top inside of the toolbox. So inside of Resolve 15, they've separated the different transitions into categories. So you have dissolves, iris effects, motion effects, shape, and wipes. So with dissolve effects, you get kind of more of a pixel by pixel transition from one screen into another. So if I was to add something like blue dissolve, what you'll see is that all of the pixels on screen are going to start going out of focus for a minute as the second clip comes in. And then when the clip regains focus, it's going to be the second clip instead of the first one. So if I drag this blur dissolve effect into the timeline, so you can either position the blur effect right between two clips where it will take half of its duration off of either side. You can have it be completely on the left or you can have it completely on the right. Generally, I'll do half and half. So now if I go ahead and show this transition frame by frame inside of the clip, it'll look something like this. I'm not playing it back in real time because it does take a little bit of power to actually render. Um, but you can see how everything on the screen is changing all at once and it's transitioning between two clips and that's how you know it's a dissolve. So in the center, you'll also notice that it's kind of half between both clips. So it's actually overlaying both of the clips on top of each other and showing a certain percentage of each clip depending on where you're at in the timeline. So if we're back here at the start of the transition, obviously it's more the clip on the left. And if we go to the right side, it's obviously more the clip on the right. So I'll try to play this back for you guys real quick here. And that would be roughly how a blur dissolve looks. So you have one clip fading into another clip, but also but also all the pixels on the screen get out of focus as it's going from one clip to the other. Now a super typical transition, uh, which is also a dissolve that you can add, if you right click on the space between two of these clips, you can add a cross dissolve, a set number of frames for the duration. And that's very much like a blur dissolve, just without the pixels going out of focus. So it'll go from one clip to the other, kind of in a percentage based fashion, until the second clip completely fades in just without the blur. So next up we have iris effects, which is where you're going to have a small shape appear, usually in the center of the screen, and it's going to expand uh, outward until that shape completely envelops the entire screen. And as that shape expands in size, the second clip is going to start fading in wherever that shape is. So basically the shape that's expanding is the second video clip. So for instance, if we do a eye iris right here, uh, and I hit play, what you'll notice is as the transition goes on, the eye gets bigger and the second clip comes more and more into view. So we can play that back one more time. And the main difference between all of these different iris effects is just the shape that you're using. Next, we have motion effects, which are push and slide. So the motion effects are going to move your clip physically off screen or onto the screen. So if I do push, it's going to by default push from left to right so it's going to be pushing the first clip to the right and then the second clip is going to come in from the left as it gets pushed onto the screen so we can play that back here pretty simple so the main thing to keep in mind is that it's physically moving the position of your clip you can of course change the direction pretty easily so if i click on the clip inside of the inspector i can change to something like push up where it's going to be going bottom to top instead. Not too hard to make those minor adjustments. So next up we have shapes and it's kind of hard to distinguish them between shapes and irises. So going back to the iris effects one more time real quick, I, I think the difference between shape and iris here is that the iris effects are allowed to have different ratios as the transition occurs. So you can kind of see with the eye iris that it starts really wide compared to how tall it is, but as time goes on, the eye is kind of opening up so the ratio can change. But then with shape effects down here, I'm pretty sure they need to be consistent. So star effect, we go frame by frame and it's the same shape, it's the same size. But then with transitions categorized under shape, like the star, the actual ratio stays the same. But then with actual shape transitions, like the star, the ratio stays the same as the effect progresses. So you can see it's just getting bigger, but the ratio stays exactly the same. The shape isn't actually changing. 
So here's another shape effect I really like, which is triangle left. So in like the first frame, there'll be a small triangle on the top left, and it scales until it gets to the bottom right at the very end of the transition. But never does the ratio or the actual shape change. So with wipe effects, the last category, what happens is that the second clip will start appearing in different sections of your screen, uh, whether that's left to right or more complicated shapes such as Ventian blind wipe. But what will occur is that different parts of the screen will reveal at different times. So if I do radio wipe here, what you'll notice, it starts at the center of the grid axis and then spins around like a pinwheel until the entire second clip gets revealed. Another one I like is the X wipe. So it's kind of like having four triangles pull out uh, from the center, revealing whatever's in the second clip behind it. And then the Ventian blind wipe would work very similar to if you were taking uh, blinds on a window and turning them so that they were opening, showing what's beyond that window. If you've ever opened blinds on a window, it looks pretty much just like that. And then you would get it right around here, where it would be horizontal, all of those little blind shapes. But in the case of the transition, it goes all the way. It ends up in the second clip and nothing's remaining from the transition. Uh, so obviously there are different options for these transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve 15, but that's basically the different categories that exist there. I would recommend going into the effects library, video transitions, and trying a few of these out for themselves, but hopefully you guys have a good understanding now of the different categories that exist there for you and where you can find them and how you can apply them. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future DaVinci Resolve 15 content.